I have another broken paddle. This one snapped close to the middle, and it's a single piece, which means it doesn't come apart in two pieces, so we'll have to use a slight trick for this repair. We'll get to that in a bit. First, we need to stabilize the paddle for reassembly. I really like using these bar clamps. They're simple, versatile, and they seem to work great so far. To keep everything straight, I'm setting up a low-tech but impressively accurate string line. It's great for paddle repairs, brick lane, probably a lot of other things. I get everything straight using the trusty eyeball method, then tack it all down with some hot glue. Remember, hot glue is your friend, even if just a temporary one. This brake was clean, so I can put this paddle back together just as it came apart. This is a convenient shortcut to restoring the blade feather angle and overall paddle length. I use the string line to verify that the reassembly is straight both vertically and horizontally. As I said before, this is a single piece shaft and I'm using woven carbon sleeve for the repair. The trick is we have to put the carbon sleeve onto the shaft before we glue it back together. It's not really a trick, you just have to remember to do it, which is something I did not do. Well, I almost didn't do. Through the magic of editing, you can't tell that I got everything glued up and had to stop and cut this cloth and put it on the paddle shaft before the epoxy set up. I'm not trying to hide this screw up, I just wanted to show this process in the right order. And I didn't think this video needed any gratuitous swearing. I mix up some epoxy thickened with fume silica and a little milled fiberglass for strength, then apply it to each side of the brake. Gluing things together with plain epoxy is just weak and sad, so don't do it. This will be just strong enough to hold everything together while I work with the carbon reinforcement. I very, very carefully smooth this joint. This thing will burn a hole right through the shaft in an instant. I really don't recommend anyone actually do this, but it's fast and it saves me some time. Then I smooth things out with a random orbital and expand the scuffed area to ensure the carbon fully adheres to the shaft. With the joint smooth, we're ready to laminate the carbon reinforcement. I add enough carbon to ensure the repair is stronger than the original shaft, since I'm not sure how much structural damage has spread to either side of the brake. Overlapping the joint a few inches to either side should ensure that we don't have any problems. For this application, it's a good idea to brush on some clear epoxy first. This makes it easier to lay down the first layer of reinforcement, and it's just good practice. Each layer of carbon is slightly shorter than the previous, creating a tapered transition from the repair to the original shaft. This is important not only to make the repair smooth to the touch, but a non-tapered repair can create a weak spot at the edge of the repair, possibly increasing the chance of another break. The carbon is wrapped with peel ply, then perforated release film, then bleeder cloth. Then it's all wrapped in composite shrink film or shrink tape. Excess resin will seep through the perforated release film into the bleeder cloth, increasing the laminate strength and taking out a little unnecessary excess resin weight. A heat gun shrinks the film, but I must be careful not to apply too much heat and damage the epoxy. 
We don't want this hot soup to start smoking or we'll have all sorts of problems. Pressure from the shrink film will help push excess resin out of the laminate and into the bleeder cloth. The shrink film comes off easily. The bleeder can usually be ripped off without too much fuss, thanks to the perforated release film. The peel ply can sometimes be a pain. You just do what you can to get that stuff off, but its advantages make it worth it. I'm actually not that happy with this laminate. It has some wrinkles in it from the shrink film, and I'm still working to dial that in. But there's enough carbon on here that I can afford to sand a little bit of it off to smooth the repair without compromising its strength. And that's exactly what I do. I sand just a little of the carbon to take off some high spots, and the minor imperfections in the laminate will be smoothed out with this fill coat of clear epoxy resin. The fill coat is sanded till all the low spots are leveled out and disappear. Since this repair took up about half the paddle, I decided to apply a fresh clear coat to the entire paddle shaft. This is totally unnecessary, but I thought it would finish the repair nicely, and it didn't take too much extra work. But the trade-off to this extra step means I'll get a nice gloss finish on the repair without having to wet sand or polish. I'll give this clear coat about a day to cure, and this paddle is ready to get back on the water. Check this out. 